Today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. And this is a day that uh, is continually assailed uh, by a few who want to minimize the thing and, and, and make it of no importance and perhaps uh, cause history to repeat itself in, in so doing. The, the numbers are just so staggering. The, the number of millions of people that were killed, Jews and, then, and others as well, is it, so staggering, it's beyond the imagination. But what I think can keep the thing alive for us are individual stories, one person. And I have the story of Paula Nyman. She lost much in the Holocaust, even though she was able to keep two dear loved ones with her, which was very unusual for those who went through that kind of experience. Life changed dramatically for Paula when the Nazis invaded her town in 1941 and executed all the young Jewish boys in the town square. Shortly after, her family was transported to the Vilna ghetto and her stepfather was arrested. She never saw him again. When Paula, her mother, and her aunt Rachel were transported to a labor camp via railroad car, her five-year-old sister Linka was concealed in a large knapsack. The child was eventually discovered hiding in the barracks by the Germans and ripped from Paula's arms. She later died in Auschwitz. Now she does uh, stay connected to a couple of her relatives there. Uh, there's there's um, you know stories about uh, two of her relatives who managed to stay uh, alongside her throughout this time. But imagine the suffering, imagine the grief and the despair that that must have struck uh, a person as they they watched their um, brothers be shot down in in the square and watch the uh, uh, child ripped from their arms and and then destroyed. It puts our troubles to shame. Yes, uh, there have been a lot of difficult things for us to pass through in these past couple of years. And there's troubles around the world that, that, you know, that shake us to our core. There's so much going on in the world that uh, is troubling and, and dangerous. It's easy for us to become full of anxiety, to be full of uh, a lack of gratitude. But we can keep going. We can uh, turn towards the good of God, and we can proclaim uh, that God can overcome. Despite having missed much of her education because of the war, Paula still dreamed of becoming a doctor. While working as an x-ray technician, she went to City College and Hunter College in Manhattan and graduated as one of only three women from New York University College of Medicine class of 1957. And so her courage didn't just get her through that tough time. It also helped her to help others. It also helped her to fulfill her dreams. And I know there's a lot of times when it feels like our dreams have departed from us, that you know, it, it no longer makes any sense to even dream that. And I can imagine you know, thinking that in a concentration camp. Well, how ridiculous would it be, to be for me to be thinking about becoming a doctor someday? I mean, you just want to get to the next mealtime. You just want to get into bed for one more night and just want to survive somehow. But those dreams, if they stay alive, they, they give us hope and they allow us to, to move forward and, and to accomplish things. And we can truly believe that there is still good in the world if someone can go through such an evil time as this and yet come out uh, with a heart to help others.